Y'all better not make me get up off this couch. All right, let's do this. Hello, everybody. My name is Brianna, and welcome back to Carefree Bree. So glad you could join me. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel, to this video, to all of my stuff that I have for my blog. I'll be putting that information on the screen and in the description below. Also, be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter and on Instagram. Be sure to check me out on there. And then last but certainly not least, be sure to donate to my PayPal and or my Patreon accounts. I just want to be able to take what I'm brainstorming on and be able to expand that. And yeah, I'm not going to mince words. Let's go ahead and get this week started. But first... this week because I need to find my chill. It's all over the place. All right, so I'm gonna start off with Thursday. Um, this week started off pretty terribly. Um, Thursday was my uncle's funeral. We finally had it. It was a very emotional day, very emotional leading up to it and going through it and then after the fact. Came on here a couple of weeks ago and tried my best to eulogize my uncle and then I had to do the same thing at the funeral. So it was very tough for me to prep for, um, to basically spill my guts out to people without crying my eyes out. Nevertheless, though, we made sure to honor him the best way we could, gave him a nice military farewell and we've been moving on from there. So even though it was an L to have to bury my uncle and everything, it was so good to see all of my family, so many folks I haven't seen in a very long time. It only just further shows how strong we are as family and friends and that, you know, no matter what comes our way, we'll get through this. So that's how that day went. Friday wasn't any better. So not just for me, but for everybody, our bodies respond to how we're doing emotionally, you know? So that's why before we go on a big date, we have butterflies in our stomach or we feel ill before a test or something, we get nervous, you know? Like our body reacts to the way we feel. And because I was grieving, um, my body responded by flaring up. And so Friday I was in bed all day. It was really bad. The good thing is though, I had my family around me still to help take care of me. Uh, otherwise I would have had to do it by myself. It can be so hard being an adult and trying to take care of things on your own and then having to deal with stuff on top of that as it piles up. So I'm so grateful that even though I was feeling awful, I had my family right by my side. Saturday, it was the same thing, still feeling awful, but I had to go home that day. I had been staying out in the burbs with my family and I had to go back for an appointment with my chiropractor because guys, I needed it. Oh my God, horrible. You talk about your spine locking up on you, you talk about your whole pelvic floor just like screaming to high hell. It was awful, so I'm glad I got that out the way. It was just super emotional coming back into town, like you're finally like having everything dumped on you emotionally, finally like your first moments of being by yourself and it just became so overwhelming, but that's why I am so thankful for my chiropractor. She is my biggest advocate. She helps me in all areas of my health. And she was able to help calm me down and like, you know, get me worked out and get me where I needed to be. So even though it was an L to have to do all that and still go through so much pain and everything, I found peace with her and then peace back home when I finally got to sleep in my own bed that night. So that was good. Another thing that happened Saturday was my best friend called me up and say, hey, I got uh, tickets to go to Kanye's Sunday service. I'm like, okay. Um, all right. <laughs> I wasn't looking to go. I didn't even know it was happening until I got in the car to come back to the city um, and heard it was sold out. I'm like, oh, okay. Wasn't checking for it, but she got the ticket. So it led into Sunday where I ended up, you know, going to Kanye's Sunday service. And it has many mixed reviews, obviously. My experience was very hectic to start out with. It was supposed to be there at six o'clock. I woke up at 6.45. Like, <laughs> I was just exhausted, okay? I get there and it takes like an hour to get into the pavilion and I have to end up finding my friends at the very opposite end from where I am. Like I am at the front left side and they are like all the way at the back right. And so I have to like bulldoze my way through this entire crowd of people while they are like fixated on the stage. It was a lot going on and I legit almost gave up. We're literally sandwiched between people. At one point my feet were off the ground. It was just so bad. And then I'm like, you know what? I didn't come all this way to get this free ticket to be by myself, feel me? Like, I wanted to do this with my friends. So I kept pushing and after like 20 minutes of trying to shove through people, I finally made it with my friends and they were like, you know, you're here now, just calm down, it's fine. I, you know, focused on the concert, on the Sunday service and I enjoyed it. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But they started off super, you know, anxiety driven and then it ended on a good note with you know, the Sunday service and also with the spontaneity of just following wherever my friends were going, just going with the flow. We ended up 
doing mimosas at brunch, we went out to the club. Yes, on a Sunday. Yes, I did pray when I got home because that did low-key make me uncomfortable that <laughs> I did it on a Sunday. But I had fun, so I mean, hey. I got a chance to just be out with friends um, who cared about me and just do what I wanted to do. I truly felt free. Sometimes I do just need to let go and let things just happen. That can be really difficult sometimes, but when it happens and it works out, it is literally the best. So I'm glad I did that and I'm glad I had fun with my friends. The bad part about that though is I paid for it the next day. Um, Monday was super awful. I literally went into work limping. I was so sore just being on my feet all day and dancing, doing, I did, I just did a lot, okay? I did the most, and it was just too too much for my body. And I'll say, it was worth it. It was worth it, but the pavement was high, and it hurt, oh my God, it, it felt so bad. But the good thing is, though, for my W, I ended up, you know, learning how to do personal practice of meditation. Um, my best friend, Mary and I went to, like, this meditation studio after I got off of work, and we learned about trying to center yourself, ground yourself, and how to, you know, connect with yourself more spiritually and so it just really helped open my eyes to different things I could do to further solidify my peace, my security, and to just give myself a break. Tuesday with me still being sore, I ended up not going into work but working from home because it was that bad. I, I could not move. It was horrible. I, I just stayed home and worked and I tried to rest up and then that night I visited Mary for the last time before she goes off um, back to Atlanta and stuff. and. We drank at her place and just had a good time. In the morning, I was a, a lot more sore than the evening after I was able to stretch and everything. So I was feeling a lot better by then, so it was good. Which leads me to today, Wednesday. Um, of course, it was a blah day. That's usually how Wednesdays go, but at least it was a work from home day, so it's pretty good. Also, with it being Wednesday, today is September 11th. When this video comes out, it will be September 13th. So I did want to say right now um, that for the day, my way of remembering people is to do something nice for somebody else. In this case, it could be doing something nice by letting you see Audrey, my cat, you know? Or doing something nice by helping someone pick up their belongings that they drop. You know, something nice. Doing something of service on a day um, like this that tends to be about loss can help us move forward. So yeah, I suggest doing that maybe on days where you're not feeling too good. Maybe help somebody out or a day where you're down about something specifically, just reach out to somebody else. When we tend to center other people, instead of centering ourselves, sometimes that helps us heal. All right, that's how my week went. Um, I will go ahead and rule this week a W because it started off terribly, extremely sad, but it ended on an okay note. I got to do all these great things and I am continuing to heal when it comes to my physical, mental, emotional well-being. So I would say that's a plus. Let's now get into the big L's and big W's of the week. The big L of the week is going to Felicity Huffman. If you don't remember who she is, she's a former co-star of Desperate Housewives. And she's also married to William H. Macy, who plays Frank on Shameless, which is an amazing show. At first, she was in the limelight because she got caught up into this whole admissions scandal that happened earlier this year, right? Where like a whole bunch of rich people were scamming their kids' way into like all of these Ivy League schools or whatever and taking actual spots away from people who couldn't necessarily necessarily afford to go, people who didn't have as much opportunity. So she and many others got caught, cuffed up, and went to court about it. And now they finally ruled this week that she will be serving one month in prison. She and many others tried to advocate for herself as to why she shouldn't go to prison, which I can't be mad at because no matter what you do, you're not trying to be up in prison. So that's expected, feel me? What made me roll my eyes about this though is that she made the claim that she only did what she did to give her daughter a fair shot into school you a millionaire did all you could do to cheat your daughter's way into school so she would have a quote unquote fair shot of getting in like ugh, guys here's the thing dude you're freaking rich like come on like what is going on i get that not everybody is as able-bodied as the next person has the same you know capabilities or whatnot but that's what diversity is for in the realm of academia you know, we want all those folks in school. So for you to say that you felt that you need to cheat your daughter's way in with her SAT scores, as if you can't afford to get your daughter a tutor, as if you can't afford to help treat your daughter's um, inabilities or anything that she might be struggling with that might be affecting her grades, as if you don't have access to any of these things, all of these resources, you tripping at that point. Like at that point, 
please go away to jail already. People need to realize what's happening here. This is something that always happens with the privileged folks in a group, no matter what that group is. It's always privileged people in a group that just do not see how freaking asinine the statements they make are. Like they see equality or the evening of the playing field as people trying to come and oppress them. Girls, serve your time. Now, do I think that she needs to be serving some 20 years or whatever? No, I do not. Just like I don't think that the mothers who send their kids to different schools and different, you know, school zones so they can actually have a better education because the school zone they are in is literal crap because there's no funding and no one pays attention to teachers and X, Y, Z. I don't believe they should get 20 years either. But guess what? They are. They literally are. Look it up, folks. It's happening. So one month will be just fine for you, Felicity. You get the L. I'm going to go ahead and skip to the big W of the week because I'm tired of focusing on negative shit. I just need some positivity. This week, I'm giving the big W to none other than Miss Janelle Monet. I love her so, so much. So I wanted to highlight Janelle Monet this week because she performed at um, the Ralph Lauren Fashion Show for New York Fashion Week, and she tore down the house. She did amazingly. The way she's grown as a performer, as an artist, is just astounding. She was already great to begin with, and now she's even greater. The things that black women and black girls can do is just so amazing and Janelle Monae is such an example of that. I mean, come on, she's a student of Prince, feel me. She's got this amazing style that even though has changed over the years has been uniquely hers and she can actually sing live and she can dance and she can pump up the crowd. This woman was standing on top of chairs, on top of tables. That crowd was dead before it got to her. Sometimes I want an excuse just to highlight a black woman and you know, I got it this week. I get it every week because we're just that awesome, but this week I just really wanted to do it. <laughs> Last but not least, we are at final thoughts. I kind of wanted to highlight what I talked about earlier with um, going to see Kanye West Sunday service. I decided to go again because I got a free ticket. And I feel like a lot of y'all, if y'all had a free ticket, would go to. <laughs> to be quite honest, like if there is a free show, you're probably gonna go see it if you kind of like the artist. Now, I realize it's gotten a lot of backlash and a lot of people are calling people hypocrites for going to see this show and whatnot because of all that's happened with Kanye in the past years with him supporting Trump and saying slavery was a choice and X, Y, Z. I get that and everything, but let's reel this in and just think about this, okay? Now to preface this, I want people to know that I never canceled Kanye. Recently in the past year, I've just quit canceling people. I've just stopped it. Instead, what I do is I put people in timeout because what cancel culture largely does is just throw people away forever, right? That's kind of the rule. We don't mess with them at all ever again, no. But that's not how human beings work. Human beings are not perfect individuals. We are going to mess up. And as a flawed individual, I can't just say that just because I don't like what you told me, I'm just never gonna speak to you again. I have a right to say that. If people wanna do that, by all means, cancel whomever you want to, but I decided that's not what I wanted to do anymore. So what I decided to do with Kanye a year ago was to put him in timeout. I decided that, look, the block is too hot right now. You're wildin' bruh, like, get out my face. I'm gonna put you in the corner. Come back later and check on you, see if you've learned your lesson. If you have, or at least your behavior's changed, then we can talk about maybe revisiting with each other. So that's what I did. I gave it about a year break, and I feel like it's a, that's a pretty good amount of time to leave somebody alone. I didn't follow him on Twitter, unfollowed him on Spotify, I wasn't listening to any of his music because he was wildin', like he was bugging. So I just left him alone. In this past year, I've noticed that while he has not taken back any of his statements, what he has not done is continue those same actions that he got heat for, right? He has stopped saying how much he loves Trump. He has stopped getting into the nitty gritties of slavery and the choices that we did or didn't make during that horrid time in American history. He's at least stopped doing the things that I did not want him to do. Am I expecting that he would have changed and did a complete 180 in one year's time? No, because with somebody as complex and confusing as Kanye West, he's gonna need a lot of time, a lot of therapy, and a lot of support to get through whatever he's going through. And I say that from somebody who is going through things where I need a lot of time, a lot of support, and a lot of therapy to get through. So I said, you know what? In this past year, you've been okay. Let's see how you're doing. I also decided to go because I've heard many mixed things about it. I've heard that Sunday service is cult-like, blasphemous. I've heard that it's spiritual. I've heard that it's great. And so all that was left for me to do was to make my decision about how I felt. And I felt that I could only make a sound decision if I went there myself and made up my mind for myself. So that's exactly what I did. When I finally was able to stand still and notice what was going on around me, I did find that 
I was pleased with what I saw. What I saw was people praising God. Not Kanye West, but God. I saw people having moments of spiritual connection with themselves or the people around them, people who are gospel singers, seeing their hearts out. This was like actual praise and worship going on. It wasn't people crowding around Kanye while he had his arms outstretched to the crowd like he was Jesus or something. It wasn't Kanye West centering himself solely in this moment. It was him getting on stage and directing the spiritual experience that was happening. People were also able to consume it however they wanted to consume it. At one point, I just closed my eyes and rocked back and and just listen. I saw people who were geeked up that he was there and it seemed like they were more focused on Kanye than actually having a spiritual connection. But that's to be expected when a huge star like that hosts anything, okay? So I expected that. I just saw so many different things and I feel like I wouldn't feel this way had I listened to everybody else. Are there things wrong with it? I mean, sure. One can argue as a Christian, when he's not at the center of your praise, then what are you praising? You know, you're probably praising the next best thing, which is the man on this stage above everybody else. So it could turn into a type of thing where people are looking at Kanye instead of at whomever they're worshiping or connecting spiritually with. If anything though, that's not Kanye's problem. That's for whoever that person is to discern between themselves what they want to do in that moment. For me, I had to be sure to separate Kanye and spirituality from this, you know? I had to make sure that while I was excited to see Kanye on stage, that I need to check in right now spiritually, ground myself with God, and then go forward and do whatever I wanna do, you know, when it comes to enjoying myself. Look, I'm just saying all that to say this. Don't believe what everybody else is saying on the internet just because it sounds like it makes sense. Sure, that might be true for them, but that might not be true for you, though. I don't know. This year, I just found myself approaching things incredibly differently. Some people do deserve canceling. Don't get it twisted. Robert Kelly to be one. But when it comes to people you see changing in front of you or evolving in some sort of way, I'm more inclined to give th those types of folks another chance. I'm sorry. I am. I guess because I've started giving myself more grace, it's given me freedom to give other people more grace as well. Do I agree with Kanye? No. Was he bugging? Yes. If he does that again, will he be back in time out again? Yes, he will. But I'm glad I didn't shut him out entirely because this whole thing showed me that if anybody was touched, even one person had a moment with God or a moment with themselves to personally reflect that is a positive thing. No, it wasn't the best concert in the world. No, I didn't get front row seats. No, I didn't get all that, but that's not what this was about. And for a concert that was for the free, I will take it gladly, okay. <laughs> all right, and that's it for me this week, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. Until then, I'm wishing you infinite freedom and perfect peace. This has been Carefree Brief. See you guys next week.